Thanks for tuning back in to Larger Curves, Real Housewives of Potomac Reunion Part 3, Live Review Part 2. Okay? Okay. So, um, anyway, you know, just since I uploaded the last video, and the only reason that it took me this long to do this one is because the other one was uploading, okay? And in the time that I uploaded the last video, which was the review for the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion, part three, part one of my re live review, for larger curves station, that channel that you're watching right now, that I need you to smash that like button and I need you to smash that subscribe button and just smash it, smash it, smash it, and smash it. And then if you want to know when I actually like do all the video or something, you could do something with the bell or something from what I hear. Anyway, so in the time since I uploaded the video, Monique Samuels did a live where she quit the Real Housewives of Potomac. Look, I'm not going to even... I have so many things that I am thinking, things that I could say, things that, you know... But it would kind of feel like kick a horse when they're down kind of thing at this point, which I think is part of the reason why she quit the way she did was also part of the overall manipulation that we've seen from her. Um, just my observation, allegedly, you know, anyway, because, you know, this week after she um, blew Jamal's camp up, right, and tried to do all of that, supposedly with those receipts from that Pastor Tanya lady, um, after that, the Gigi girl that was her longtime friend and Chris's longer time friend had a lot to say. And I guess in her saying everything that she said, which was her side of the story, I mean, it was only right and expected because they did kind of like, you know, blaspheme her character, so to speak. You know, I mean, it was only right. I mean, it was expected, but they did... Then, after she finally started re responding, there was this whole thing where they were like, oh, she's basically a disgruntled friend, tried to do that disgruntled employee type thing on her, you know, which wasn't the case at all. It was that I was a friend. He hurt my feelings the way you dissed me. And can we talk about it? No. Okay. You're scorching earth. I got a lighter too. <laughs> Okay, that's what they were going through. Anyway, so um, that was just uh, breaking news information that Monique Samuels has reportedly, self-assertedly resigned from the Real Housewives of Potomac, effective immediately and will not be returning the next season. Okay, now this is on the heels of if you caught my first review here on Larger Curves, where I need you to smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. Don't forget. Okay, so when my earlier review of part one, I hope you got a chance to see that and smash that like button too. I was telling you about, you know, how she was doing her bot thing and how she got Chris all hyped up and everything. And, um, how he came out guns blazing for the girls and they did the highlight reel of, you know, him threatening that if he could be uh, something about Caitlyn Jenner, then he would be able to molly walk somebody or snatch something or anyway, something about if he could mighty morph and power ranger into something else, he would try to snatch Giselle and, or somebody for supposedly spreading the rumor that it was proven that they, the Samuels themselves, started. So all of this scorched earth that they have done was, ended up being self-annihilation. It ended up being like a self-destruct type of thing. I guess it was a cry for help. And hopefully we would have heard it earlier, but we didn't. And instead, she imploded on TV. I hope she gets some help, though. Because, you know, that is a beautiful family and I love T'Challa and, you know, but Chris wasn't having any of it and I don't even need to go back 
because it'll be highlighted in history, the amount of angry black man Chris gave us this evening. And then, um, yeah, there was a lot of angry black man from Chris Samuels this <laughs> evening. And um, as ever, Chris Bassett gave us the nice, calm Chris. You know, he wasn't too pleased overall with the Samuels behavior, but hoped, you know, he's a guy. He's like, yeah, they kind of hugged it out after the dudes left. Anyway, um, what was else? So that's kind of like where we were from the first part that I reviewed. And then I was leaving off with Andy getting to Robin's highlight. So that's where we're finally going to pick up. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And we're on to Robin. Andy says shades. So Robin, are you getting married? Because you know, every season he's been asking, are you getting married? And so he's like, are you getting married, Robin? After six years, uh, she's finally going to get married. Obviously, he put a ring on it, right? And so um, then they do about the embezzled, embellished hats. Remember that whole comment when Giselle was like, oh, what they call embezzled girls? She's like, no, embellished. And so the hats, right? And then they did the whole photo shoot thing where she was none too pleased with uh, Karen's photos. Remember, she was like, oh, I just don't feel like they were like, you know, playful enough. And so then um, she's like, not to mention that you threw my hat in the confessional. And Karen's like, no, I didn't. And then they showed the clip of her doing it. And she's like, well, I picked it up. And, um, you know, yeah, anyway. So then he was talking about uh, Andy. He went on to what did Juan feel about Mike's creepy, non-committed statements to Giselle that he made when they watched him back. And she was like, I even was like, oh, Juan, did you see this? What's going on, Juan? And Juan was like, yeah, I saw it. WTF, girl, I have no idea, right? Um, so, but the bottom line is he put a ring on it. Michael Darby, Crocodile Dundee, Shelf on an Elf, Elf on a Shelf doesn't know anything about what he's talking about. I hope they are the next to go, actually. I think that that is not a good look to condone the constant, to condone the constant and overall, I mean, that is kind of like, you know, it's an assault of sorts to like go around grabbing all these guys' butts all the time that Darby does, that he does. I mean, they have it on film. They have it on film that he says this, right? So now what? Now what? I don't even know. I don't even know. But I think they should go and get some counseling and come back after, you know, she had the baby or something. So that's that. So, okay. Now we're on to Karen and the photo challenge. You know, okay. So I personally feel that Karen's photo would have definitely gotten voted off of hashtag, hashtag A-N-T-M. America's Next Top Model, yeah, that photo would have got it voted off, okay? And as it turned out, it was a slow seller that got discontinued. However, Robin's taxes got handled, you know? And when she did call, they Andy was like, well, you know, you had old taxes this year, girl. What was you talking about the Hugers for? And Robin said, well, my thing was more that I didn't believe that Karen didn't know about Ray's tax issues. That's what I said. I didn't say anything else because I knew about my tax issues. I knew I owed the people money. I just didn't pay them in time. Like, I... so that's what I was talking about. Anyway, so then for some reason, uh, from going from Mike and talking about the, um, wedding and engagement and all that Chris Samuels again like a freaking pit bull started talking about he needed a chess break because he wasn't pleased that the people didn't decide who talked about the dirty filthy rumors about his wife and their family and the blah blah he was like on one man and I'm surprised that Monique was not more aware of the image of angry black man. 
I'm an angry black man. And my wife is an emotionless bot. And we together are the beautiful Samuel's family that we are here. Yay. And don't you talk about us. And even though we do things for you to talk about, don't you talk about us. And anyway, I'm just wishing them well. But it was like, you know, it was a lot to watch and a lot to take in. So anyway, um, they did the highlight thing about um, Mike's comment about how just the two of them should go over to the bachelor party. And then um, Ashley woke up long enough to answer a question. Um, oh, but before that wake up call, Karen, um, they said they were like, what exactly did Karen know while Juan is drunk that Robin needs to worry about Karen? And Karen said, she talked to her husband. She consulted with her husband. And after consulting with her husband, that, um, you know, the Grand Dame consulted with the Black Bill Gates. And after the resolution at hand, they decided that it would be in most effective board's information for them to not proceed with annihilation of said information, with the um, dissemination, that's the word, with the dissemination of said information. That's what you handed out, right? So I'm just saying, talking about she decided after talking to Ray not to bring up what she was going to say that she knows about when Juan is drunk, even though she ain't never been around him when she drunk. Okay. When he's drunk. So there's something there that she's like, but if you don't keep Ray's name out your mouth, Robin, then I'm going to have to drop it on you and let everybody know what it is that Ray and I discussed that I decided not to let you know about this time. Back to the story, okay? Um, the Chris's hate that they can't hang together. And, you know, but it's up to the ladies to decide if they're ever going to get together again, you know? And somehow that came up. The wedding date for Robin isn't decided. Right when Andy's asking about the wedding date, Ray all of a sudden was like, I want to marry you again, Karen. You know, I, and so she gets totally upstaged by an announcement of a second in a uh, second wedding vow renewal for their 25 year anniversary vow renewal. She gets completely upstaged by the finally six year announcement of announcement of a proposed almost wedding date. Finally, after six years, she gets upstaged by Karen and Ray's announcement. It was like classic reality. It was hilarious. It was hilarious to me. I don't know why that was funny to me. Anyway, um, so then um, Andy asked Chris how he felt about it. And Chris said that he wants to praise Monique. Is that what happened? Well, anyway, we get to Chris, who all of a sudden awkwardly is like, I would just want to praise Monique. You know, she went through a lot this year. And she went through a lot. And I just want to, I just want to, yes, big boy was like, he squeaks when he cries. I just want to say how strong she's been. And maybe I love you. You know, the plot to take her family down was like so. And she, he like gives her like this weird hug. And the whole, and then starts talking ish to the other people that are like pfft, fakery, you know. And then he's like, "That's when he did that line that they showed on the commercial: hurt people, hurt people. Tell these vicious, filthy lies about my family and this non-plot that we started, as it turned out. Anyway, oh, it was a lot. So let's see, where are we? We have a couple more minutes. Okay." So again, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Thanks for enduring this video. I know it's a lot. Um, Andy and... Okay, so then Andy, he is doing the rundown of all the girls. Is that it pretty much? Yeah. The Chris's hug it out and they agree to be cool, even if the wives aren't. And then this is the wrap up. Yep. 
And then Andy's complimenting the ladies, saying that they have million dollar ladies. Million dollars, lady. You look like a million dollars now after 11 hours of this interaction. And you know negativity can make a, make a lady look really raggedy. You know it can make a lady look good from far, but far from good. If you know what I'm saying. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say hello. Hi. Thanks for tuning in to Larger Curves. And hi. Hello. I forgot. Totally. Anyway. Um, so anyway, so in the wrap up, Andy was going through the ladies and he went to Wendy and he said, you know, and she, he, she says that she learned a lot. Because of her background, she came off as combative and she would like to like, you know, not be come off as that. Robin says that she's in a great place. She has her taxes paid. They are looking at houses. And, oh, no, not looking at houses. They are having a house built. Did I tell you that part? They're having a house built that the embellished hat money doesn't have a lot to do with. But it does help. And that the ring is on the finger and the satin line hats are flying out of the doors. Okay. Ashley's baby number two. Okay. Like I said, I think the Darby should take a break or something or get some like counseling or something that entails somebody's hands being taped to their sides. There used to be a series where the guy would like walk around and like pat his hands like this. Yeah. That. Uh, yeah. They need to put his hands like to like his side. Okay. So anyway, Ashley's baby number two um, and having to answer for Michael's all the time, discretion. She said she's happy to do it. She's the happiest I've ever been. I'm 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 the happiest I've ever been. As her curls were like falling and then curling and falling and then curling. And while she was half asleep and half answering the question. And anyway, so then he goes on to um, Giselle. And Giselle and her relationship. He was, and he was like, I'm sure you're making a phone call. And Giselle was like, I called him already. And he's like, I love, and, and I called Jamal already, Giselle said. And Jamal is like, whatever. Whatever we are, I love you, baby. I'll see you when you get back. Like that, you know. She she said that she's actually like Ashley. She's actually like Ashley in that regard. With the, I'm happy as ever. I'm happy as ever. I'm happy as ever. We know what we have. I'm happy as ever. We know what we have. You know, but we've all been there in relationships. That's what it is. There's ups and there's downs, and there's ups. And then there's downs and then there's mediums and whatever, you know? So as long as you have an understanding of where you stand with the person that you're with, it doesn't matter as if you're happy as ever. So, okay. So then Candace, you know, um, might finally get to spec. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did I do Candace yet? Almost. Uh, where was I? Sorry, you guys. Giselle. Yeah, that was Giselle. So Candace, and while she's hurt, she needed to get to through this reunion. It was cathartic for her to get through this reunion and it be, be able to like, you know, come through that whole season and everything and just come through the other side and not give up and not bow out halfway through. And she needed to do that. She said she needed to get through and wanted to get through the season for closure because overall she loves most of the ladies on the stage and she was, and there was a real sisterhood there and she was happy for that real sisterhood. And then Karen, Oh, and she felt some love for the people. Oh, and then she whipped out her love spreader. I don't have mine, darn. She whipped out her love spreader finally. Remember in the very first episode of the reunion, she had the love spreader or hate blocker prop. She finally whipped it out, and it was a fabulous feather um, fan that like matched her velvet bow dress. It was cute. And then, of course, Karen did that line about, you know, how the pain that everybody has caused everybody and Giselle probably ain't going to hear it, but she wants the best for Giselle. And she hopes that Candace might, you know, her and they can, they can have some kind of respect for each other one day. And, you know, she does want the sister circle 
also that is deservedly, you know, there for their access and what they used to have, kind of, you know, before it kind of got, I don't know if it's like fame or I don't know, or labels or money or I'm not really sure. The ladies do, they did kind of like fall out more than they used to. I feel this season there was a lot of sides and stuff like that, but I'm really happy overall. Oh, Wendy. Oh, and then how it ended was he's like, well, let's do the Wendy Slither off the stage. And so then they all got up and they all went off the stage like this. And it was so cute because, you know, Wendy's such a good sport. And so she let him off. And of course, Karen had got to add her two cents again. So that was nice. And it was just nice. And that's a different way to end it, you know. Um, and, you know, snakes is the kundalini energy, you know, and the age of Aquarius just happened. But that's a whole other video. I might do another video later. Oh, that looks better like that. I might do another video later about the um, why I believe Monique resigned from the Real Housewives of Potomac this evening after it was earlier reported that she was um, um, that she had said that she got her contract earlier today and I was like oh and I was I was like oh that was interesting you know not saying that I didn't want her to come back but I did think that she should have taken some kind of time off or something you know but she full-on resigned anyway thank you for watching this Real Housewives of Potomac Reunion Part 3, Live Review Part 2 from me, Larger Curves. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. You know what I'm saying? And happy holidays to you. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. My kids are in here being kids. You know, that's what they do during these times of the 19 and everything. We got to do what we can do. Boys will be boys. You know, at least they're here and they're safe. And I want you to be safe where you are. I want you to be loved where you are. And Larger Curves loves you. Thanks for tuning in. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. And share this video. I hope you enjoy it. Come on back. Peace.